In a climate reckoning in the heartland, we saw the impact a change in climate and severe storms can have on family farmers. Zach Johnson is a fifth generation farmer and runs the Millennial Farmer YouTube channel. My colleague Tanya Rivero spoke with Zach about some of the biggest issues facing farmers like him. The overwhelming concept of climate change and the opportunities that still exist in the farming industry. So in this documentary, we saw farms devastated by severe weather, which caused levees to break and, and left some farms underwater. Can you talk a little bit about the impact severe weather has had on farmers in your lifetime? And since you're a fifth generation farmer, have you noticed or you believe there have been changes to what farmers have had to deal with in the generations that preceded you? Well, I can only speak uh, on behalf of, of my generation, what I've seen um, in my lifetime. And I would say uh, it, it seems to me like there are more large events now, um, but I can't, I can't say that for sure. And has the weather, or the larger weather events, has that impacted the way you approach farming? Well, we've always had to deal with Mother Nature. That's always been a battle we've had to fight. As far as farming goes, that's always our, our number one thing. We never know what Mother Nature is going to give us, so we do the best that we can to, to manage uh, for the unexpected. And um, so we, we've always had to kind of plan around that. As far as changing practices on our farm, Again, we always try and move forward. We always try to advance the best we can. We use the latest technology and we always try to uh, be as smart as we can and as practical as we can when it comes to taking care of the natural resources. Uh, so, so planning, specifically planning for climate change, I guess is, is not something specifically that, that we've set aside for uh, because we're always just trying to strive to, to do better and, and to be better and, and always implement the latest technology and do the best that we can. You know, they've often said that farmers are among the first, you know, environmentalists because what you do is a cyclical nature. You prepare the ground to be reharvested and harvested again. So you have to sort of take care of the earth. You know how to be good stewards of the earth. So in your experience, are farmers, you know, discussing the concept of climate change and whether what you as farmers know about preserving the earth, whether that could be shared on a wider basis? Yeah, climate change is something that definitely gets discussed, um, but I'm not sure. It, it oftentimes feels like, you know, what is an individual farmer supposed to do to really affect climate change? It's kind of over overwhelming to think about. I would imagine that it's probably that way for most people in general. We always just try to do the best that we can for the natural resources in our area. We, we are always trying to figure out how to be better for the soil and, and how to make sure that the water leaving our communities is cleaner because, um, you know, that, that's what we have. The natural resources is how we make our livelihood. I'm a fifth generation farmer. I hope that the land is in better shape for the sixth generation. And I, and I hope that after that, it's in even better shape for the seventh. So we're always trying to look forward, always trying to look ahead. Um, but specifically planning for climate change seems pretty overwhelming for, for me anyway, personally. I think it probably feels that way for a lot of people. Now, you know, Zach, according to the U.S. Department of Labor, during the last 30 years, the average age of the American farmer has climbed from just over 50 years old to 58. You're a young farmer, so what factors do you think are contributing to that trend, and do you see fewer fourth and fifth generation farms like yours? I think, uh, unfortunately, probably so. I, I think the, the trend over the last uh, 40, 50, 60 years really has, has been kind of towards that. There's less and less farmers all the time. Um, uh, about 100 years ago, close to 40% of, of Americans were farmers. Um, today, that's uh, closer to about 1.5% of us. So there's less farmers out there. Um, th those of us that are left are, are farming larger amounts of land, and, and we're we're really efficient at what we do. We're good at taking on that extra land, but I think that will probably be a trend that will continue. I think some of that uh, comes with, with the, the urbanization of, of America. Really, people want to move into, into uh, the urban areas where there's, uh, where there's more jobs and, and some bigger opportunities. You know, farming is hard work um, and it's risky. Uh, we have certain uh, things that we can use to try to manage that risk and and we're always trying to look for new ways and better ways to manage the risk but the fact is is that it is risky and we don't know consistently from year to year what our income is going to look like or if there if there even will be an income so i think some of that is is what's kind of slowly driving some people away um, unfortunately i do think that it probably will be a trend that will continue 
On the flip side, I think that there's going to be a lot of new opportunities for smaller farmers or people who want to get into farming to start a small farm and, and really concentrate on some of the niche markets that are available now, especially if you're, you're closer to a larger populated area. You know, there's a lot of consumers who really want to meet their farmer and know how their food is grown. So I really think there's a lot of opportunities for people to get into uh, smaller scale farming and, and still be profitable. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that as there is an increase of demand for this sort of farm to table eating that a lot of people, like you said, in urban areas are embracing. Is there room for that sort of gentleman's farm to, to grow, that smaller farm outside of an urban area that perhaps produces organic produce, which is very popular, and free range, you know, eggs, all of those things which, which seem to command a, a, a pretty penny. Um, is, is there room for that end of the farming industry to grow? Yeah, oh, there's definitely room for that. I, I think there's no doubt about that. Um, the, other, the other side of it is that there's also room for larger farmers to transition into organic. So if, if I want to take my farm and transition it into organic, there is an opportunity there. Um, but at some point, y you will probably flood that market and take some premium out of that market if too many guys start to transition that way. But I still think that um, for people who want to get into farming and, and don't have the capital to get into a, a, a larger scale farming, there's definitely going to be opportunities to hit on small, some of those smaller niche markets um, where you don't need several hundreds of acres to farm. You don't need big, fancy, shiny equipment. You really just need to get out there and, and get dirty and be able to concentrate on, on who you are and, and work with the soil. And if you can show that to the right consumers, there's definitely going to be a demand for that. Um, so, Zach, you farm in soybean and corn primarily. Can you speak to how the current uh, you know, tariff war with China has affected your farm? No doubt that it's taken some of the, uh, some of the pricing off of our soybeans. Um, it's, it's really hurt that market a little bit as far as our, um, you know, trading, trading soybeans overseas with China. They're, they're a big buyer of U.S. soybeans. And, and so we've definitely hurt that market, which took a lot of, of price out of the soybean market to start with. Um, farmers in general are supportive of, of President Trump, and, and most of us are pretty cautiously optimistic. Uh, you know, some of, the, um, some of the tariff aid that we got last year, um, farmers aren't looking for a handout, but it definitely did help make up for some of that loss in, in revenue that we saw because of the lower soybean prices. It's not something that we want to see consistently. It's not something that we expect consistently. But I, I think President Trump is working hard to try to uh, resolve some of the issues that he believes are out there. And uh, for the most part, U.S. farmers pretty well stand behind him and, and we're cautiously optimistic about the situation. So, Zach, you in particular have embraced social media, starting the popular millennial farmer YouTube channel. Why do you think it's important for farmers to use the Internet to connect with other farmers and with those who are far removed from food and growing and cultivation? Well, I think you touched on it a little bit there with your question, is that there are so many people who, who have become so far removed from what really goes on out on the farms in rural America that uh, people have become so disconnected. And so when they drive down the highways, maybe they get to a, a, a rural area and they see the big machines out in the big fields. They don't really know what's going on out there. To them, it looks like, uh, you know, large industrial corporate farming. Um, and, and that's really not the truth. We're still 97, 98 percent family farms out here in the United States. And uh, just because some of us are, are incorporated, that doesn't mean that we are, you know, large uh, industrial farms. We're, we're still the same families doing it that, that love what we do. My family's been farming for close to 145 years now. Um, we came over in the 1870s from Sweden and we're still farming the same land. So we love and we care for the land. And I, I feel like there's a real opportunity right now with social media to be able to connect to the people who are disconnected and yet who still genuinely just want to know what it is we do out here on the farms out in the rural areas. So we have that, that ability now to be able to connect with people and show them who we are, who our families are, what it is we do and why we choose to do the things that we do because it's hard to find uh, the truth when you get onto the internet you know there's there's a lot of noise going on there and it, it can be difficult for somebody who's disconnected from agriculture to be able to try to uh, sort of weed through that and figure out what's true and and what's not and and what's the truth about what goes on on the, the american farms today 
Right, absolutely. I think you're doing a great service. I, I want to ask you, because you say that most farmers there, you know, support President Trump's economic policies and they're standing behind him through the, the tariff war that's going on. But as stewards of the earth, as you just mentioned, that, you know, love the land and work the land, I'm, I'm wondering what the farmers there think about the president's environmental record. You know, um, farmers are proud people. We like to work hard. We take a lot of pride in, in running our businesses efficiently, and we take a lot of pride in caring for the natural resources. Um, so what we like to see personally is we like to see farmers who will take care of the land themselves without being regulated and, and told what we need to do because oftentimes those regulations really um, will, will get in the way and, and make things worse, and that includes for the environment. That doesn't mean just from a business standpoint, but sometimes those regulations can can sort of be written in, in ways that just plain old don't make any sense when you actually get out here and you get your boots on the ground and you see what it is we do, you can see why some of those regulations can be so difficult to work around. And so uh, for me personally anyway, I feel that it's important to, to give the farmers the freedom to be able to make those choices for what's right on their specific land and, and what's right in their operations and be able to manage our natural resources the way that we want to because my natural resources in my community are more important to me than they are to anybody else. This is where my family lives. This is where my kids go to school. This is where I make my livelihood and I hope to continue a, a sixth, seventh, eighth generation on my family farm. All right, well, Zach Johnson, the millennial farmer, thank you so much for joining us and offering us your insight. We really enjoyed speaking with you. Yeah, thank you very, mu very much for having me on.